printers with the wiggles. First layer is not looking right on printers that shouldn't have that problem. And input shaping gone wrong. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 103. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, you're struggling with some print failures, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. It costs nothing and helps the channel grow. Greatly appreciate that support. We have some interesting print fails here and one of them completely stumps me. So enjoy this one. I've got a bunch of questions on that one though. It's not often that a fix is this simple and it certainly wasn't something that I would ever try. And of course, remember, if you do want to get your fails looked at here on the show, you can submit them to us on all the social media platforms using the hashtag print fix, or you can email me directly YouTube at 3 dmusketeerscom We'll do whatever we can to help you get back and printing with purpose. But without further ado, let's just jump right into fixing some of these print fails and petting the cat, but not too much. Not too much. Shifting or other issues. We have an Ender 3 V2 Neo here with professional firmware installed. I don't know what that means, but fine. Using Cura with Overture PLA filament at 260, 50 millimeter a second, and the retraction of five with a speed of 45. It's pretty standard settings, and we've got some wiggles here. We can see that the wiggles are pretty much only in one axis. So when you deal with V wheel printers, especially enders, right? The cheaper the printer, the more often you are to have this issue. You have a couple of different things, but these are mechanical problems. So you have a belt is too loose. Your actual gear that is attached to the motor has come loose a little bit and it's wiggling back and forth. You also have the potential for some V wheels to be loose. These are all things to check for on these affordable printers if you're getting wiggling like this. Traditionally though, it is going to be either the belts or it's going to be the pulley. In this case, I would check the pulley first. They've talked about looking at the belts. You might be helping it, but you might not be. The belt should have some twang to it. You know, not too much that you think that there are banjos and maybe you should run, but some sort of Southern twang to it. You feel me? Prusha recently released an app to help you determine this. Uh, I've just kind of always done it by feel. Doing a video on that has been really difficult. We did go through a couple of different series for fixing 3D printers. We'll cart that series so you guys can take a look if you're looking at specifically dealing with V-wheel printers like this. But it's not perfect, and there could be something mechanically wrong with this printer too. For what we can see, this issue primarily exists on the Y-axis, although it might also be on the X-axis itself. The Benchy normally prints to the side, so the issue seeing it both left and right on the Benchy would mean it's forward and backward of the bed itself. Or should I be using starboard and port? But we've definitely got some mechanical wiggling here. If we look at the other way, this would be on the x-axis, it looks like we might have some up here. Yeah, it looks like there is a little bit, but this is also white filament. This is also likely the white filament that came with the printer. It's somewhat transparent, which keeps it from showing the actual problems. Don't use this filament to tune in printers. Transparent filament can not only hide problems, but especially white filament can show more problems. So does that mean that like translucent white filament solves the problem of showing too much? but then also not showing off. I don't, I don't know. But when it comes down to it, the white filament is going to be part of the problem. I would recommend changing to a different color. I love a good natural flat gray, like a nice Nardo gray. You know, if that was an actual color of filament, I would choose that all the time. I would check those pulleys. I would check those belts because we definitely have some wiggling here happening in the system. Next up, Victoria's decided to join me in my lap and we've got a printer with some wiggle room. And well, that's not good, is it, Victoria? We don't like that. That is traditionally an issue with V-wheels. And we've talked about V-wheels in a previous episode. We'll card to that so you guys can take a... Okay, I, I can't, okay. You've got a V-wheel printer here. This is most likely some sort of Ender 3. I think, maybe, I don't know, honestly, it's an Ender 3 clone of sorts. We've got a printer here that is wiggling and on the underside on that singular wheel will be an eccentric nut. 
and that eccentric knot just needs to be tightened and everything will be good. And just be careful when you do tighten these. You want to make sure that the top wheels can still kind of move, but under a ton of force. That's the only time and place you want them to be able to move. Be careful because it is very easy to over tighten V wheels and that will cause them to wear excessively. There is a weird kind of line of function versus failure in this that I'm not a huge fan of because it can really mess with your print quality. But once you figure out what that feels like, it's a pretty easy system to handle. What is causing this? We have ripples in the first layer. We can see that it's an Elegoo printer, but let's see if we have any extra. We don't. So we don't know if it's a Neptune 2, Neptune 3, Neptune 4, but I believe it is the Neptune series. In a case like this, you are simply too close to the bed and or your bed is dirty. So talked about this before, if your ruffles have ridges, if in between your actual print lines, you've got a ridge, you're too close to the bed. And if there's a gap or a valley in between them, you are too far and have to bring your nozzle closer. In this case, I believe they are too close. However, I do see that it looks okay toward this left side here, which tells me it might also just be dirty. And especially because we, the brim looks okay, although it might be bad, just clean and re-level your printer at this point and make sure that your nozzle height is set correctly. We did an entire video on first layer and Z offset. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. It is a great video to look at, especially if you're dealing with problems like this. So definitely be careful there. Next up, a fail from our Discord, which is available at the $10 tier higher at the links in that description down below. If you do want to support the channel a couple of bucks, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've got one of our members here, Mr. Chris Catlett, who uh, had some stringing going on. He is printing out a pine sill case. Fairly certain this is a pine sill case. And well, it's pretty stringy. So this is PLA plus printed at 210 C. And while that's not inherently too hot for this material, it might be. Now, chances are the filament's probably just a little bit damp or he needs to increase his retraction settings. If you have filament that is run perfectly fine, it sits on a shelf for a couple of months and then all of a sudden it starts looking like this, throwing it in a dryer will definitely help it out. Traditionally, I would not call this wet filament per se because it's not technically wet yet. We would see way worse issues if the filament was wet, but it is starting to uptake moisture, which means, you know, it would be useful. If this does randomly start with a brand new spool, throwing it in a dryer is always good. But if it is a new material that you've never used before and you don't have really good print settings for it, you might not have enough retraction either. Also, for whatever it might be worth, you do not need support on those openings for the lock and the hinge. It's just not necessary. Uh, but that is a nice set of organic supports. And I believe Chris is using a modified version of the profile that we have for the Soval SV06 and SV06 Plus. Next up, a submission from one of our super fans, Man of the Sky, otherwise known as Yusuf, who uh, found this on the Prusa Facebook group. We've got a Mark III S with pretty decent layers over here, but really not decent layers over on the other side. So what could be going on? Remember, Prusas have automatic bed leveling with the Pinda probe that can also detect the magnets. So you should not have this problem, except that probe can come loose. There's a screw on the side of the probe that holds it in place that keeps it from wiggling. If that screw is loose, the probe has a tendency to wiggle up and down. And when the printer is doing its probing sequence where it's getting really close and then bouncing one or two times, and in our case, we do the seven by seven with five hits per point, that drastically increases the chance that it's gonna vibrate and move a little bit, causing the anomaly that you see. This could also be a bed that is dirty, but I don't think so. It looks way more like we just don't have an appropriate Z offset. And the nice thing is with the Prusa is a very simple thing to fix, and you can do it on the fly as part of the live Z offset while the printer is printing its first layer. On the Prusa, you can just click the main button on it, scroll down to where you can do your live Z calibration, and just go ahead and set it to be just a little bit closer where you need it. But also make sure that that pin to probe is nicely secured. If you are still having issues, I would look at some other mechanical issue that's going on with the printer. Check 
to see the Z axis might be binding, or maybe one of the Z lead screws is bent, something that Yusuf is currently dealing with. He's got a lead screw for his Z axis that is really wobbly, and that is unfortunately not going to work. Although, I kind of want him to send it to see what happens, you know science. Next up, another fail from our private discord where we've got a submission from Crazy Photon who has got this real bad issue with the cones that you see. This is a multicolor print as you can tell and they're doing filament swaps but then it looks okay. This one is deceiving. It took me a bit but then I saw that little reflection. This is top lighting. They're actually lighting the print from the top, and so you get to see the shadows way easier. And while I would argue there is absolutely some tuning that needs to be done, when you don't have full top lighting, the print actually looks pretty decent. Those of you that have seen any of our Prusa time lapses have said that, wow, those layers don't look very even. It's because we're using top-down lighting. I don't exactly have space for like a softbox or something fancy to be there. And any of the recent bamboo time lapses that we've done, I don't know if we posted any of them yet, but I have installed a light on top of the bamboo that shows this exact problem there too. It is a natural thing as the filament heats up and cools down and as the diameter varies ever so slightly. You are never going to get a perfectly smooth print, not with FDM and not certainly with these crazy affordable printers. You have to spend a little bit more money to get that rigidity in that motion system. I would say I think they're over extruding and that would clue in here. We can see some ridging in between the lines and that means we're a little bit too close. Excuse me, you're a lady. If anything, you don't do that for free. I, mean, I just gotta teach this cat business apparently. And then we look at a different angle. It certainly looks better but I still think we're over extruding. We can see here, we definitely still have some ridges in between the lines. I would look at dropping that extrusion multiplier ever so slightly, or you could just look at making sure that you have your steps per millimeter calibrated properly. This one has puzzled me. This is a Prusa Mark IV. Yeah, the brand new, beautiful printer from Prusa. And this one is, well, it's having some problems. This is from Fan Shishuda. This is a ringing test. It is designed to check to see if your printer is ringing. And yeah, clearly it's ringing and it shouldn't be. They tried sending that exact same file and G code to a different Mark IV user. And this is what you see. It's much better. Now there is still some ringing. This is a torture test. It's never gonna be perfect. And realistically, until we put accelerometers on the Mark IV and you're not just using the stock input shaping profiles from Prusa, you will probably see some ringing on these machines. But that's a big difference from this to this, and it's the same G-code. Now, I will give you a few seconds to figure out what you think the answer is because um, I did not get this one right, and I don't think I would have ever gotten this one right. They have tried multiple motors, they've tried different wiring, they've done all these different things, and I'm sitting here saying it's mechanical, it's mechanical, it's mechanical. We ruled out all the mechanical side, so I said, all right, it's the motherboard. We need to get a new motherboard. Something is wrong with the drivers for it. We've got a problem. It was the motor pulley. The actual motor pulley itself was a problem. And I don't, I don't really know what the difference is here, but uh, we've got our old pulley right here and our new pulley right there. Our old pulley is on the right, new pulley is on the left. And, uh, I don't see much of a difference, but you can't really argue with those results. That is a big difference from changing a freaking pulley. It looks very similar to the one that they have here. Now, obviously there's still some tuning for input shaping that needs to be done. And it's why I do wish that Prusa, and hopefully they do at some point, release a ability for users to utilize their own input shaping board to find out the actual numbers that make sense for their printer in their atmosphere. A great example of this, the Mark III S's that you see behind me, none of them have their step loss detector on because at a certain point, they would all trigger at the same time because they would get into a resonance 
and that extra force they need to break that resonance as they move would trigger and tell the machine that it is collided with something. So I had to turn it off. When you have multiple printers on a shelf, they're going to vibrate a different way. And heck, different shelves are gonna have different vibration profiles. And it's why I believe being able to set your own input shaping numbers would be a lot more valuable. So Prusha, if you're listening, that would be great. And uh, I guess Prusha is listening because I was recently a guest on Prusha Live, or now Prusha Podcast. Uh, take a look. For me, it was earlier today. For you, it was a couple of days ago, but it was a lot of fun. Got to hang out with Mikolas. Joe came in for a little bit. Of course, there was Fotis, Mint, Wexter, and Fixum Dude were all there to talk about the printables memberships, and I was brought in to talk about 2.6.1, which we recently covered in a video. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look, and in fact, our video came out before Prusha's did, and and I am very sorry to all the Prusha Slicer devs that are now going to have extra work because of the things that we talked about. Mikolas really liked it. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I will see you in November. Please don't hate me. I think there's going to be like a rogue Prusha Slicer dev that comes and tries to off me while we're doing our tour. Uh, by the way, that's happening and I'm really excited. So if you're excited to make sure to get subscribed. But yeah, that was a fun event that I had like five minutes to prepare for, but it was a lot of fun and I'm glad and honored to be a guest on that show. And I think I get a printables badge for it too. Nice. My mind's blown. I don't know if yours is for this. I, I was really going to say you got to push for a new motherboard. I don't think it's a motor, but I guess they were sending raw motors and Shishuda had to put the pulley on themselves. So yeah, if the pulley's messed up, this could actually be the problem. It's never something that's ever crossed my mind, that it's a freaking pulley. But you know, damn it, sometimes the weird answers are often the right ones. I know there's still work to do here. I don't think they're 100% done, but all of our minds are pretty much blown when you look at this is just a pulley. There is no difference here except old pulley, new pulley. Obviously still some work to be done, but this is way better. And it's why we do things like Print Fix Friday, because I would never know to think about this. And I don't know, maybe if it was like a grub screw was a little too loose. I, I, I don't know, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below, because this one has just quite frankly, it's kind of upset me because this to that would upset anybody that just spent at least $900 on a 3D printer. And to see that it was nothing but a pulley to go from this to this, it's a little crazy. I do believe there's still work and I'm hoping that input shaping can get better with the Mark IV. And it's actually why you haven't seen a Mark IV here. Not only is the input shaping not 100% ready, but I also don't have the need and I really don't want to spend that kind of money on a printer right now. I am waiting for my XL order to come up. So I'm gonna put the money toward that and paying for a scanner. Uh, I like scanners. Anyways, guys, that's all we have for you today on the 103rd episode of Print Fix Friday. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for all that you all do in making these episodes possible. I like to do something cool with some of the top tier level members. Uh, you guys are probably watching this video and you probably watch all the way to the end. So if you have, let me know what you would like to see. Do something with the names. I don't know. Could be fun. Anyways, right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can go back and look at over 100 episodes of us taking a look at print failures and how to fix them. And right next to that will be me on Prusa Live. So go take a watch at those. And I'll see y'all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care. Don't forget to leave a like.